So I've gone ahead and chosen a shoe. This is a classic roller. It has a roller motion every direction. It gives some traction with this crease here. Because the horse is very upright, uh, there may be concussive issues. Because the horse has a little maturity and a little work in its uh, past or history, I want to allow that hoof to break over in any direction. I'll make some subtle modifications to these shoes, shape them to the hoof, and uh, we'll see if we can't get those on. I've put a little ding in the outside branch so that I can keep track of what's outside and inside of which shoe is which. And because this horse has a couple of rotational deviations, I'm going to hold that foot just off of the ground. This horse is going to have a tendency to break over lateral toe quarter right across here. If we draw a line straight across, so this horse is going to break over on this corner. It's very important that we allow him to break over where he naturally breaks over. I'm not going to change that. I'm going to allow him to do it easier with this classic roller style shoe. So I've marked my outsides. I'm going to look for my mark so I can set the shoe on there and make the adjustment I needed. The left four, near four, I felt was more, had more of a fetlock varus. Wearing a little harder on the outside. So I'm just going to give that left four a little more width with the web. What that does is it uh, floats that side doesn't allow it to sink into the soft soil so much. When I'm shaping a shoe, I'm going to start at the toe and move back towards the heels. I noted that my branches needed to come in. I'll put the horn at the point where I want that to start coming in, hit beyond. At the same time, I'm going to tap those clips in at the same angle as the hoof wall. I'm going to go to the lateral branch, do the same thing. Tap that clip in. Then I'm going to pull my heels in slightly. I'm going to check the shoe for flatness and symmetry. Make adjustments right now. When I'm working the solar surface of that shoe, I'll work the inside. I'm using the round side of that hammer, dropping it down. And what that does is it recesses that inside width of web so that we have no contact between sole and shoe. Check it this way. Check it this way. Make adjustments as needed. And then we'll take it to the horse and test the size. And this is called hot fitting. That steel is still hot so that I can set that shoe in. If it's not quite right, I can go back and make the adjustments while the steel is still warm. This doesn't hurt the horse. It could hurt the horse if I left it on there too long. Studies show that I don't leave it, if I don't leave it on there for more than 15 seconds in a 30 second period and the shoe is just at a black heat, the hoof is not uh, taking the heat and is not going to injure sensitive tissues. This is the right front. Needed to close the shoe some. And also on the medial branch, the inside branch, there was an old abscess track there. I want to take some of the concussion, concussion off of that while it's healing. It's already on its way to healing, but we need to reduce how much pressure that heel is going to get. 
And so I'm going to relieve the steel or reduce the thickness in that area. So when the hoof is weight bearing, this area will not be weight bearing. I'm further going to reduce that in width, but I'll use the grinder to do that. I'll check the shape of it before I make further alterations. On the left front, I gave them a little more width of web laterally on the outside by extending the crease or the fuller on that side. I may further increase that mechanical action by reducing the width of web here. I want to make sure that this horse can break over where he naturally breaks over, which is lateral toe quarter. On the right front, I set this down so I reduce the thickness of that heel where it's compromised from that old abscess. I'm going to further reduce this by using the grinder. I did not extend the crease in this one because I did not feel that the horse had such a fetlock varus. When you're using the grinder, make sure that you have protection on your eyes and on your hands. Grinder. Once I have the shoe shaped I'll and set, I'll further reduce that sole so I do not have contact and I can tell where I had contact by the burn marks. I'll take the shoe check one more time, make sure that I don't have an area that catches stones. Make sure the shoe fits. I'm going to use a Liberty E4 nail. I'll set two nails in trademark to the inside.
put my finger up the side of the hoof wall, aim for my finger. Before the nail comes out, I'll remove my finger, listen to the sound of it, feel the texture of the hoof as you're driving. Where it comes out, I'll bend it over. I'll be redoing this one because it didn't come out at the appropriate height. I'll put two nails in, set the foot down, check the shape of the shoe, size of the shoe, fit of the shoe. If it's not appropriate, then I need to pull that shoe off, make the appropriate modifications, and then continue nailing it on. Reduce the sole where I have contact with the shoe and I can define that with the burn marks. I'll put the shoe on, check the fit. If I feel it's appropriate, then we'll continue with putting two nails in, set the foot down, and reevaluate. This is a number four Liberty E head nail. Once I've checked that shoe, find it appropriate, then I'll continue putting in nails. And we'll put those nails in the holes that are appropriate. If there's some um, discrepancies in the hoof wall, or if you don't feel the nail is appropriate, you don't have to use that nail hole. Once I have the nails in that I feel appropriate, I'm going to use a clinch block and my urethane hammer and block the nails. What that does is it starts the clinch. It starts that nail bending out at a 90 degree angle so I can finish it up when I draw that foot forward.
put the nail in so that the trademark is towards the inside. The other end is tapered so that that nail will come out of the hoof wall. I'll put my finger up there, aim for my finger, tap, listen, feel, remove my finger, and drive the nail in. Using the clinch block and the urethane hammer, I'll tap on the nails and that starts the clinch. It starts